Okay, in this video, I'm going to explain what Pascal's law. In order to understand Pascal's law, first thing you have to understand is the definition of fluid. And here I have two most basic examples of fluid, which is gas and liquid. And uh, the two important keywords here is transformability and uh, incompressibility. And for gas, you can define gas as a transformable, transformable, and incompressible, uh, compressible fluid. And you can imagine that. You can imagine balloon when it comes to gas. In the balloon, you can put gas, and it's transformable because you can basically squeeze it and also compressible relatively easily but for if you put liquid in that balloon again liquid also transformable but this is incompressible transformable and this is incompressible fluid so that this transformability is one big requirement for transfer uh, for being fluid but there are two types of stuff which is incompressible fluid and the <coughs> gas is incompressible fluid and for pascal's law usually we use liquid as a medium uh, as a fluid and uh, this complete incompressibility is important because you can simultaneously write down volume input equals to volume output. This is going to be pretty important equations for Pascal's law. So just keep this equation in mind first at the first place. And let's go with the second one. What is Pascal's law? So Basically, Pascal's law is talking about how you can leverage the force. So if you use Pascal's law effectively, you can leverage your force using a container into two outlets. So when you talk about the Pascal's law, you usually see this type of like, you know, weird apparatus with diff two different outlets and usually you have different like area of like you know one outlet or and different outlet which is usually called like you know, a1 and a2 so this is the apparatus that you're gonna see when you study the pascal's law pretty often just keep it this mind and uh, yeah, there are only like you know two equations uh, to understand uh, first one is the basic work equation basically work equals to force multiplied by distance and it's all always important in this physics course too to stick to the standard unit and in this work it's going to be true and the force is going to be newton and distance is going to be meter the, and the next one is work output equals to ah uh, sorry work output equals to work input this is called conservation of work and uh, this is also something you always want to start with when you want to uh, solve the problem of pascal's law so please yeah please also uh, remember this one and uh, yeah usually another important thing is the volume so here i define 
using the definition of incompressibility, I put like you know the B input equals to B output. So basically you're gonna press some liquid here and uh, the volume that you're gonna be placed here are going to be like you know uh, transit to here and the, the difference between the volume input is always equals to the volume output but when you think about this like you know you can also apply this equation volume equals to the area multiplied by distance and uh, if you use this equation you also can write as a input multiply by distance input equals to a output in this case a2 multiply by distance output so this is a general like equation that you have to know and with this knowledge you should be able to already solve the problem by yourself so let's do it with me so the question is like this if the area of a is 0 0.001 meter and uh, the area of 2 is equals to 1 point 0.1 meter square and external force equals to uh, F1 equal 100 Newton then external output force F2 so basically like I said when you solve the problem of Pascal's law you always start with the conversation conservation of the work so work input equal work output and uh, work input equal distance f input multiply by distance input basically i'm using this one same thing can be applied for the output to f out multiply by d out and uh, now we wanna obtain this value but we also don't know this distance input and the distance output as well well we can use this equation So basically what you can write is if it's called like you know the input as well if in equal multiply by because d in can be written like this the volume so you can write this down as volume divided by a input so just because b equals to area multiplied by distance and you have to replace distance uh, with no number you just want to bring this a into the left and you just plug it into this one here and uh, same thing can be applied for work out which is f out multiply by b divided by a out these two but these two values can be equalized so you can write down f in multiply by b a in equals to f out 
multiplied by the area out. Here, good thing is you can cancel out this B value because it is the same value. And now, if you want to obtain this F out, you just want to bring this A out to the left. So F out can be written as A out over A in multiplied by F in. Now we all know these values. A out is this one, and A in is this one, and F in is this one. So out should be 0 0.1, and A in is 0 0.01, and F in is 100. Newton. And if you calculate this out, you can get 10,000 Newton. So this is as easy as this. So and the implication of this one is even though you just put 100 Newton, the output force can be multiplied by 100 Newton, which is big value. So this with this, you can say that you leverage the force of input by having a different area of output. So this is the idea of Pascal's law. You can basically leverage your force and generate a larger force in the output side.